coming up. All this bill was proposing was to have the health minister appoint some advisors and draw up a plan. It would already be moot. The government already has the authority to draw up a pandemic preparedness plan. What is this bill really about? They want to phase out livestock farming altogether. Using people's fears of another pandemic to push that agenda is diabolical. For the record, not all far-left radical socialists are, are vegan. That's why this bill also calls for measures to promote alternative proteins. Alternative protein is just a far-left dog whistle that means crickets. This guy's garage. Like and subscribe. 6.42, we will now move to private members' business. Bonjour. Affaire Manande député, private members' business, consideration at report stage of Bill C-293, Pandemic Prevention and Preparedness Act, standing in the name of Mr. Erskine-Smith. The core of this bill is the plan. We need this government and a future government. We need legislation passed in this House to ensure that all future governments take every step possible to prepare for the next pandemic and ideally take steps to reduce the risks, pandemic risks, to prevent the next pandemic. And the review body, the advisory body, was not intended to be some searching, backward-looking accountability function. It was intended to ensure that experts came together to learn lessons to inform the plan, to get that core of the bill, that, that accountability to Parliament on a prepare pandemic preparedness and prevention plan, then so be it. Let's get the amendment passed, and let's get this bill to the Senate. Uh, resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Renfrew, Nipissing, Penbrook. Madam Speaker, I'm pleased to rise on behalf of the Common Sense Canadians and the reasonable riding of Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke to reveal what this private member's bill is really about. I oppose Bill C-293 because it seeks to cover up the repeated failures by this government during the pandemic. I don't believe this. Uh, it is the intention of the member for Beaches East York to cover up his party's gross incompetence. But if passed, that would be the effect of this bill. As more Canadians are forced to attend political re-education camps, they're only learning that intention does, doesn't matter, only a fact. Similarly, I don't think it was the intention of the member to perpetuate harmful racist stereotypes about people who live in China, but this bill does have this effect. Thankfully, I've not been forced to attend a Marxist re-education program yet. That's why I still believe the intention does matter a great deal. It's clear the intention of the member for Beaches East York was to have the federal government undergo a critical examination of how it managed the pandemic, then use that knowledge to inform the next pandemic plan. We've all heard calls for an independent public inquiry or a royal commission into the handling of the pandemic, but this does not do that. Instead, this bill would have the Minister of Health appoint a committee of gender-balanced advisors. These hand-picked Liberal advisors would review not just the federal government's actions, but also the actions of provincial and municipal governments. Barging into provincial jurisdiction seems to be a favourite pastime of this NDP Liberal coalition. It also has the added bonus effect of diluting any possible criticisms that could come from a report prepared by people selected by the Health Minister. That the member for Beaches East York felt the need to bring forward this bill is a scathing rebuke of the NDP Liberal government. Despite repeated assurances during the pandemic that the government would conduct an independent review, the Liberal member had so little confidence in his own government, he had to try to pass a law to get them to act responsibly. At the same time, the Liberal cabinet had so little confidence in its caucus that even while this bill was before a committee last October, the health minister was conducting a secret review. When journalist Paul Wells asked the government in November if there was a secret pandemic review, this government stonewalled him. If not for the order paper question put forth by the member for Yorkton Melville, it, it is likely this secret pandemic review would never have come to light. Fortunately, Canadians don't have to wait for the Liberals to release results of their secret pandemic review. The United States National Health Institute 
conducted a review of Canada's pandemic response. Here's what it wrote, quote, in comparison with its southern neighbors in the Americas, namely the United States and Mexico, the Canadian experience appears to have been a relative success. However, comparisons with exemplars during the COVID-19 pandemic, such as Australia, New Zealand, and South Korea, highlight shortcomings in Canada's pandemic preparedness and responses, end quote. The British Journal of Medicine conducted a review in 2023. Here's what it found, quote, Experts found that lessons from the 2003 SARS COVID outbreak had not heated, been heated, and Canada's governments and health authorities were ill prepared for COVID 19, with fragmented health leadership hindering a coordinated response. End quote. That quote from the Journal of Medicine really underscores a major problem with this bill. The SARS uh, 2003 outbreak was supposed to be the wake up call. It was the catalyst for creating the Public Health Agency of Canada. There was a pandemic plan in pay place, just like this bill calls for. There was an international pandemic surveillance unit, just like this bill calls for, except the Liberals gutted the surveillance unit to focus on flavored vaping. They ignored the existing pandemic plan and decades of emergency management practices. Which brings us to this legislation. If all this bill was proposing was to have the health minister appoint some advisors and draw up a plan, it would already be moot. The minister already has the authority to appoint advisors and has already done so in secret. The government already has the authority to draw up a pandemic preparedness plan. If the government already has all the power it needs, what is this bill really about? Earlier, I mentioned how this bill reinforces harmful racist stereotypes. With its focus on regulating agriculture and putting limits on land use to prevent urbanization, it reinforces the racist wet market theory. Despite the fact that the Wuhan Virology Institute was conducting research on coronavirus carried by bats, which scientists had collected and brought back to Wuhan, many still believe the virus crossed multiple species at a live animal market. For too many, it was easier to believe that people who reside in China live and work and shop for food in unsanitary conditions. These outdated stereotypes risk blinding us to the growing threat of bioterror and biowarfare. For all of human history, the viruses which sought to kill us have been the kind which cross species. But we don't live in that world anymore. We live in a world of low-cost gene editing. The rapid development of our of mRNA shots illustrates just how powerful bi biotechnology has become. Yet this bill is entirely silent on the most likely source of the next deadly pandemic. Instead, this bill seeks to use pandemic preparation as a pretext to advance the progressive ideological agenda, a communist manifesto. This bill calls for new regulations on farming. It grants the minister the power to shut down any type of animal farming deemed high risk. Say goodbye to the chicken and pork industry in Canada. Before my Liberal colleagues begin screaming disinformation, I would encourage them to compare what Section L2 says versus Section L4. L2 calls for the regulation of commercial activities, including industrial animal farming. L4 says that any farming involving high-risk species is to be phased out. Nowhere does this bill define what a high-risk species is, but a reasonable person could assume that any species which has previously been the source of a deadly virus would be a high risk. There's a big difference between regulating risk and phasing out risk. If the member was truly concerned about the pandemic risk of productive farming practices, he could have brought together farmers and scientists to come up with legislation to reduce risk. But that's not the goal of the liberal vegan base. They want to phase out livestock farming altogether. Using people's fears of another pandemic to push that agenda is diabolical. But that's the difference between a conservative vegan and a liberal one. The conservative vegans just want affordable fruits and vegetables for themselves, while the liberal ones seek to impose their vegetables on everybody else. For the record, not all far-left radical socialists are, are vegan. That's why this bill also calls for measures to promote alternative proteins. Alternative protein is just a far-left dog whistle that means crickets. 
What's the far left and their desire to have, a, as, what is it with the far left and their desire to have us all eat bugs? First it claimed we'd have to eat bugs because of overpopulation. When that didn't pan out, they seized on climate change and claimed that crickets produce fewer greenhouse gases per pound of protein, all the while portraying cows as climate criminals. Now they're using the threat of future pandemics to phase out pork and poultry while pushing their favorite alternative protein. Canadians aren't biting. They see through this pretense. And what Canadians don't see is any real accountability from this government for the decisions taken during the pandemic. Madam Speaker, with the uh, member for Beaches East York's reputation for independence within one of the most servile Liberal caucuses I have ever seen, it's easy to imagine this bill may have started out seeking real accountability. Unfortunately, the only contrition to pandemic preparedness the publication of this bill achieves is to increase the nation's supply of tissue paper. It gives the powers to the health minister that the health minister already has. It seeks an advisory committee the minister already appointed in secret. It reinforces the racist stereotypes of people living in China. It is a power grab for opponents of modern farming. It remains completely silent on the increasing risk that the next pandemic could originate in a laboratory. At best, this bill is ineffectual. At worst, it opens up an avenue for more regulation of land use and seeks to phase out modern farming. It may have been the intention of the member to use the bill to prepare Canada for the next pandemic, but the effect of this bill is to advance far-left agenda while blinding us to the growing threat of bioterror. This bill is not worth the cost to Canadians. Yeah, yeah. Resuming the debate.